Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Lauer, and today I'm going to show you how to turn an unused corner of your house into a home workspace. Yes! That was really good. Yes! Yes! I got it. So my wife and I are both educators, and we're going to be working from home for a little bit. Now, being a shop teacher, I'm perfectly okay working out of a garage. My wife, on the other hand, prefers a desk setup, so she asked me to make her a workspace that she can feel more comfortable at while we work at home around our two small children. What's great about this setup is it's really easy to do. All you need is a corner of your house. It can be a bedroom, it can be a dining room, wherever you've got some free space. You don't have to go out and spend a lot of money on a brand new desk. All you need is some supplies and some simple tools that you might already have laying around the house. This workspace is just built into a corner that happens to be in our bedroom. My wife had this filing cabinet that she brought home from work. I ended up using it to support the left side of the desk. The desk itself is just a piece of laminated plywood that I had left over from a kitchen remodel. This desk isn't supporting a ton of weight, but we do want to make sure that it's stable enough for everyday use. To do that, we need to make sure that these ledgers are screwed into the studs in the wall framing. Now, if you don't have a stud finder, that can be a little bit tricky. Fortunately, I'm going to share with you a few of my tips and tricks on locating the studs in your wall without having to go buy an electronic stud finder. That said, you're still gonna need a few tools for this project. We're going to need a drill, a hammer, a small nail, some two inch screws, and a level or two. Two is better. Here we have the space we're going to be working with. It's just a corner of our bedroom. The idea is that we're just going to spread a piece of plywood between this filing cabinet and some ledgers we're going to put on this wall and this wall. So we're gonna put one piece of wood up here like this, and we're gonna put another piece of wood up along this wall, and that's going to support our piece of plywood. You wanna hang something on a wall, you need to screw directly into a stud. A stud is basically the wall framing. It's behind your drywall, and they run vertically. Now you can use a stud finder if you have one, but if you don't have one, then you usually have to go out and buy it, and you're probably only gonna use it once or twice. It's not really worth it if you're gonna do that. Fortunately, if you know anything about framing, there are a few little tricks that you can employ to figure out where your studs are, First off is you want to look for door jams. Now a stud is an inch and a half wide. So our stud starts right here and there's going to be two of them side by side here and that's going to provide the support for this door. So we have about a three inch target. Another thing you can look for are electrical outlets, switch boxes, things like that. The electrical outlet recesses back in here and they're typically mounted to the side of a stud, either the right side or the left side. Windows are kind of the same thing. So we're gonna have one inch and a half stud right here on the side of the window. Now keep in mind, if you do have some drywall and you're gonna need to add on a half an inch for that, there is guaranteed to be a stud right in here. Now the way that windows work, they do have a double stud. The second stud is underneath the window and that helps support the window sill. We're guaranteed to have a good three inches of studs straight down like that. Now you may have heard about studs being on 16 inch centers or 24 inch centers and what that means is studs are 16 inches apart and that is pretty typical. That's a good guideline if you have a longer wall that doesn't have things like doors and windows, because the problem is you're not gonna have any spaces wider than 16 inches, but it doesn't necessarily mean that all of your spaces are going to be exactly 16 inches. So for example, we could have our stud right here for the window and then 16 inches here, 16 inches here, but then this little gap right here is only five inches because it's too close to the wall. Or it could go the other way. So from the wall, we've got 16 inches, another 16 inches, and then a little tiny gap there. You can actually knock on the walls and sort of listen to the sound in the spaces between the studs, it's actually gonna sound more hollow. This is only gonna work if you have a really good ear. You may have to do a little trial and error here. Another thing you can use to tell where the studs are are defects in the walls. Now this works better on non-textured flat walls, but if you notice anything that's off about the wall, nail pops or cracks or anything that is in a straight vertical line, 
chances are there's a stud that the drywall has been nailed and that's going to extend all the way from the ceiling to the floor. So once we think we know where these studs are, we can start testing the wall to see if our theories are correct. If you get a hammer and a small nail, you can use this to test and see where your studs are. So I'm just going to take this nail and I'm going to tap it in. If it feels like you're going into bare wood, you are. That's a good thing. So we're going to mark that so that we remember for next time. We can go ahead and pull this out. There might be one right there. Nope. Well, if I can push and pull this nail easily by hand, then there's no stud back there. So what I'm going to do is actually move over about half an inch and try again. Nope. Let's try that. There we go. For a small little bit of wall like this, I know there's going to be a stud right here. I know there's going to be something in the corner here. I need to figure out which side of this electrical box that stud's going to be. So this is really the only one that I'm concerned with. Let's do our knock test. Sounds a little more solid on the left side here. There we go. Biting into wood. Now we figured out where all the stud's going to be. That's going to make the rest of this job a lot easier. Okay, so now it's time to start putting in our ledgers. We're going to need our level to make sure that this all goes in correctly. So here's the filing cabinet that is going to be basically one leg of our desk. You can see that it's backed up pretty much all the way to the wall here. One side of the plywood is going to rest right on there. I'm actually going to put my screws in the ledger board first, and that's going to make driving it in easier. So I'm going to find where my studs are, mark a little line. I do want to space the screws about evenly. I am dividing the wood into thirds. One third, two thirds, three thirds. I'm just going to start by driving the screws down. Not all the way, not into my floor, but just enough so that they can stand up on their own. They start biting into the wood and that's all I need. I'm using a two inch screw for this because I have a three quarter inch piece of material. Sometimes you've got other stuff in this wall. You can have electrical plumbing and if you have a screw that's too long, you risk running into those pipes or those wires, which is not good. A good rule of thumb here, if you're not sure what's in this wall, is take whatever your material thickness is, add one and a quarter inches and that's how long you should have your screw. You can probably get away with maybe up to about quarter inch longer, but I wouldn't really push it any further than that. I have a three quarter inch material right here. Add to that one and a quarter inches, that gives me a two inch screw. So I'm just about ready to get this mounted up here. I wanna level it to my filing cabinet. I wanna make sure that uh, I don't have any gaps under here. <laughs> Now by putting the first screw in the middle, that allows me to adjust a little bit. If I need to bring one side higher or lower, I can do that. And check again. Okay, that's pretty solid. So for this side, we're going to do pretty much the same thing. We're going to start by marking out the spacing of our studs. I know there's going to be one right here. Reasonably certain there's going to be one right here. I'm going to start by putting my level up on the original ledger. That's going to tell me where the inside of my corner is supposed to lie. And this is where having a second level really comes in handy. You don't need a second level. You can always move this first level over here. You just got to make sure that corner stays in the same space or mark it with a pencil or something so it doesn't get messed up. But a second level is super handy. And now this should be nice and level. If you want to check and make sure that it is in fact level across, you can actually put your level here. And if it is still level, then you're in good shape. All right, now for the fun part, getting it all put together. For the top part, you can pretty much use whatever is handy. I ended up having this leftover cabinet panel from when I redid my kitchen. This is a nice piece of plywood. What's cool is it's already finished. Yay, so it's gonna be nice and smooth. 
not going to have any splinters to it, and uh, I think it's going to make a good work surface. Not bad. And here we have a look at the desktop. So a thing with older homes and honestly even newer homes is the walls just are not that straight. You're, you'll be hard pressed to find perfectly 90 degree corners. That's what professionals use trim for. This is just gonna be a temporary piece so we're not gonna worry about putting any trim on this to cover this up. You can if you want, but for this project, I'm really only intending this to be a temporary solution. One thing we do need to do is we need to make sure that we anchor this table because right now it's a little bit wobbly and I don't want it to slide off while my wife is working on it. That would uh, not be good for our relationship. There's a number of ways that you can fasten this down. So what I'm actually going to use are these little trim screws. I, I don't have a lot left. I've got like five but uh, that's kind of why I'm using these up here. They're just gonna go in and bite into that ledger. There we have it. We have our completed temporary workspace. It has been secured to the ledgers with some trim screws. There, 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 and there. Do keep in mind that it hasn't been secured here or in the front of the filing cabinet. So there is a little upward play to this. So we definitely aren't going to want to grab onto this and wrench it up or anything like that. But again, it's just a temporary workspace until I can build a nice new clean desk for my wife. Hey, babe. Hey. How do you like your new desk? I love my new desk. Thank you so much. Is, is this going to work for you? This is totally going to work. I was able to set up my big monitor here in the corner so I can run multiple applications at once, which is super cool. I have plenty of room for everything. I was able to store all of my supplies and stuff in these little drawers that fit underneath. This is going to work out great.